and welcome. Welcome, good evening. Is that how you said it? <laughs> Hello, good evening and welcome. And welcome uh, to the uh, Flory Models Thursday Night Show. Here we are on the 14th of May uh, 2020. Yes, we all feel a bit pooped today, to be honest. Tired, knackered, whatever you want to call it. Because I was up at the crack of arse, literally. And, uh, well, John's bottled out because apparently he was doing a workout. I can't imagine John doing a workout. That was the thing. <laughs> <laughs> He's doing a yoga workout. Is he something. doing a yoga? You've got, to, you've got to put the camera on it and record it. I think, we, yeah, it should have been quite good. We should have just had him on in the corner just doing his bit, you know, yeah. off he goes. Oh. Uh, but anyway, good evening to everybody. We trust you all very well. Hello to everybody in Floryland. I hope the chat's on because I've just, that's it. Let me just turn it on. Oh, yeah, loads of you in there. Good to see you all in here. As always, remember, if you've got any questions, post them up shortly. Not yet. Wait till we say go, and then you can post up any questions, and we'll do it then. So we'll have a, you know, a bit of a roundup. Look at some of your work. I could talk about this being finished. Um, secret project, which actually is hanging out. It's not that secret. Yeah. <laughs> bit of a rant uh, and stuff like that so yes any problems then we'll deal with you in a minute so are we all okay how's it going how's it going Nathan all right good yeah looking forward to the weekend <laughs> well what are you doing yeah, we're good. where are you going <laughs> just I don't have to sit at my computer all day then oh. you know? very, very nice and um, as you can see Andy's actually finished a MIG Two Yay! weeks too late. I know, but it's at least it's finished. It is. It was, um, it was fun. Mm -hmm. How could you hash that kit? It's a lovely kit. Because that's the about, yeah, it, kit. It went together really, really well. And paintwork went on and right. I just I cocked up a few things at the end. Mm. I like scratching paintwork whilst I was weathering it. Yeah, I've heard about this with a brush. How did you manage yes. that? Was using any bristles yeah if you got brush <laughs> like mine i thought you were right with yours i don't know whether it's that one i was using or it's one of these anyway i was using and i just caught nope, the edge the caught the edge of the um is that the ferrule or something they call yeah i was just giving it a good i was putting oils on i was like giving it a good rub and i ended up catching one of the corners there on the paintwork scratched it right so yes i um few choice words and yeah but was it like a little scratch or like you're doing it for a while and didn't notice and took half the paint off the wing or something no it's like just it was probably a little scratch probably i don't know four or five mil long there you go happy little accident stick some wash in it and carry on what's no, the no, drama I wanted to get rid of it it was right on top of the uh fuselage yeah yeah weathering bird strike yeah. you can't it's, it's um it's gone but I thought, I thought he was going to say some else, bird um, dropping. Or bird poop. <laughs> Need some pigeons. I was going to say, speaking of which, Sorry. have you got your pigeons on yet? No, no pigeons yet. Oh, they're coming tomorrow. Oh. Are we going to have a mastercast of, uh, you know, class even, of actually how to do pigeons? Will you I've be painting no them idea. on the sprue? I've got no idea how to paint a pigeon. <laughs> <laughs> Study in the garden. Yeah. <laughs> Shall I do wood pigeons or just common, yeah. you know? rats with wings yeah exactly yeah <laughs> so, yeah no it's nearly finished i've got that and another figure to to do to stand near the bike hold on if you're gonna do that i'm gonna have to hold on stay there don't move there we go <laughs> <laughs> that better, I just say that, yeah, Ian, like the other guys said, don't be afraid to show any work on the forums. No one will um, criticize no, or we'll rip or so, you know, just, you know, just yeah, post, yeah, post up and everyone yeah. will be you post know, them up. appreciative. Yeah, feel free to post up. Don't forget, we're all friends here. But yeah. that's the whole point, you know, don't be frightened to post it up. Trust me, if anybody has a go at you, they get thrown out. <laughs> Simple as that. Yeah. So, um, you know, obviously, if you spot something in a way of helping a member, like we've always said, constructive criticism is welcome. You know, it's just people just say it's wrong, it's crap, it's awful. You know, then, yeah, we don't have any of that. Yeah, colour's wrong. Colour's wrong, yeah, <laughs> even if it is the silver or whatever. <laughs> 
<laughs> RLO83. I don't know, whatever it could be. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, we only pick on Andy. He's all right. He don't mind. He's used yeah. to it. <laughs> used to it, yeah. <laughs> so, yes, but no. Anyway, Matt, how's it going? How's uh, life at uh, PM Towers? Yeah, good. Been busy again, but yeah, yeah, feeling it tonight. A little bit flat, to be honest. Flat. Yeah, no, been yeah, a bit flat today. Mm. But uh, no, apart from that, no, I'm all right. Good. Yeah. Mm. Very good. Uh, well, as for me, I've been very busy today. I did orders in the morning and then I've done editing and completed this. Um, yeah, the stick. I don't know. It's got to come up with a witty nickname for it. But yes, it is done. Here it is. It's finished. Da, 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 flybys and all the rest of it. So it's all completely finished now. To be honest with you, I've got a cunning plan after the show when it gets dark. I'm going to take it outside, stick it on the flat roof of my carport and try and photograph it. So, because um, obviously it'd be dark then. Um, so, but the only thing I'm a bit worried about is the guys know they're actually demolishing the factory next door. Um, and they're not really taking any prisoners with it. So it is a little bit of a, uh, a mess out there. So we've got debris and bits of crap and all sorts everywhere. So that's it. I think it's a lot more robust than I think. I'm very dubious with it, but I think it'd be okay. So, um, but yeah, so anyway, I want to try and photograph this outside. I've done a load of photographs inside and we've done all the video work and I've done the, my end montage for it and all the rest of it, but I just want to get some nice overall shots. Um, so I'll probably be hanging a, a sheet off the washing line, else black sheet and trying to take it like that. That'll be the next thing. It's just, it's really, really awkward to try and photograph. But anyway, it is done, it is finished. Uh, the next part will be up with you on uh, tomorrow. The final part will be up with you on Monday so um that's it it'll be completed there's two more parts the last part is a bit of a marathon one it's going to be about 45 50 minutes i think by the time the titles are on it so uh but yes but i must admit thoroughly enjoyed it it's quite nice doing sci-fi because you can't go wrong literally you know you can have as much freedom with it as you like and that's what i really like about sci-fi so when you're into that weathering stage and just messing around with it and playing with it you can go along if it doesn't look right just take it off go again and but there's no real right or wrong so you can actually experiment i think more than normal so if you're doing an aircraft or an armor you are sort of governed by reality uh, but when you're doing something like this you can do whatever you could do one of the pods sky pink if you wanted to if that was a color so, so you're going to film this um, escapade of photographing it on the flat roof then and have you pre-brought your appointment to A&E? Uh, no, but I do know, <laughs> know an A&E nurse, <laughs> so that's handy. <laughs> She'll be home at about half past eight, so yeah, we'll be all right. <laughs> As I'm up there with it in one hand and taking photos with the other. That's how I did the 30-second um, scale typhoon in flight. I had all of the acrylic rods in the sky like that and was taking photos like it. So, uh, and then I did the same thing. I put it on the flat roof on its base with it up and just took photos of it like that. So anyway, it'll be fine. Noises. What could go wrong? <laughs> hey, I bet you was making jet noises as you was flying it round. Well, I don't know. It don't make any though, does it? <laughs> what, a typhoon? I oh, no, the typhoon. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. And when you're carrying it, you have to bank it round the corners and everything. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah but no thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed it um just obviously some of the guys obviously watching this will probably won't see the videos for it um but um it's a lot about the weathering and i show three different techniques that basically do the same thing it's these panels on here so one is sprayed one of them is using neat oils because somebody asked about can you use oil paints for painting well yeah because that is there the lighter medium color on here is the uh, just oil paint brushed on um, and then I use oil washes and then stipple effect with it to give it that sort of really warm look to them. But again, some of these panels are done that way as well. So uh, same thing down the back and a few other places on this one. So anyway, it's going to be all about that. So there's multiple layers of weathering that go into this one. So the next two parts really cover all of that right the way through. Um, and then obviously final reveal at the end. And to be honest, I think it's a fantastic kit. I don't think it's worth 200 quid. But like I said before, the trouble is it's of its scale and its size and obviously its genre. A lot of people probably haven't even heard of it. If you're under 30, <laughs> you've probably never even heard of this thing, have they? So it's not an iconic type aircraft like an X-Wing or something else like that. So they obviously have to charge more to get the money back on it. So, But yeah, apart from that, all done, all finished. And I've started on the new project as well. So we're well into that one as well, making our way through that. So we're on a bit of a roll at the moment. It's all going along very, very nicely. Cool. 
Okay. So you're saying that's a bit of a niche market then for the discovery thing? Yes, very. Very not niche. As, not as niche as the big version of it, the 172nd version of it, which is like 12 grand or whatever it is. That's a really, really niche version for it. I can't imagine many people buying them, but especially because I showed you the pictures on that one, the detail on it isn't very good <laughs> compared to this one. And it's like, yeah, okay. But the thing is, I think they were going off of the original one, which was 15 foot. So, yeah. So yes, that was it. So lots of fun with that one. Anyway, I thought we'd start off with, we haven't done it for a while, but we're trying to get things slightly back on track. Having a look around the forum at your great work, uh, some of the things that we've spotted this week. Um, so if we start with um, the, the, uh, this one, okay. Um, so Nathan spotted this one, but I saw it as well this week as well. Fantastic. Glenn's done a beautiful armoured JCB. Mm. So why did you like this one then, Nate? Why did you pick this one? I thought the dust effects were spot on. Yes. In a, to, a short answer to your question, it's it just it's the dusting on it that looks brilliant. It looks to scale as well. It's not. It just looks right. Yeah. It's used, but it you know it's dusty, not over weathered. It's well posed. Mm-hmm. And um, it just looks, I mean, it's not my sort of, not my thing at all, armour, but I like that one. It was, wasn't it Glenn that did the um, main yeah, uh, husky sorry. that we showed the other week, wasn't it, a few weeks ago? Mm -hmm. Yes. And he's on a bit of a roll with his armour, isn't he? Yeah. It's the tyres in particular, it's not just whacked on, it's actually sort of worked in and... Yeah. I think the thing that I like about, you know, to be honest, all of his work is very good. But again, this one shows it as well. Is as you say, it's the way the tyres are the, exactly the same weathering as the vehicle. You know, yeah. so it looks like it's in there. All too often, you'll see people and they, you know, obviously you know, different colour pigments on wheels. That's what's on the vehicle, and sometimes it looks quite obvious. Um, but again, with this one, it's a nice sort of masterclass in muted, you know, at the end of the day, that's fully weathered, but it's not in your face. It's not like got huge mud all over it and it hasn't got like, you know, chipping or it's worn buckets and stuff. You know, mm. it's worn in the areas that are, but the rest of it is all pretty much just dirt and grime. And let's face it, these things, you know, I know they get a bit of a hard life after a bit of time. But if you were thinking just it's been dropped in theatre and it's around, you know, I don't know, Afghan scooping stuff and all stuff like that, it's that wear and tear it's got is very seems to be in keeping. That's no. what I liked about it. And also it's cool because it's a JCB that's armoured. What, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I know they have them around Nathan's area, don't they? When they're just putting in pipes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Armoured JCBs to put the cable in it, yeah. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Mind you, round our way, they had a load of JCBs, had the fuel tank slit to get the diesel out, so they could do with them as well. It, looks, it just looks real. Mm, yeah, it does. It's yeah. a bit of a cliche, but the buckets especially look yes. exactly like you see them. Yeah. No, it is very nicely done and to be honest it's nice photography on it as well because it's mm. focusing on the item not in like a diorama or anything else so all your line is drawn into it and i think the color works very well with the dark background with the yellow as well um, but i tend to find that most sort of modern military in the sort of sand camos and things like that they work really well on a bike background anyway because it shows off the model beautifully um, but again it's very nicely photographed yes good job indeed Anyway, um, next up we have Rick. Not that he's biased at all. It's done the Kinetic <laughs> F104, which is the Japanese Starfighter. Yeah. That's a smart scheme. It is. Isn't it? The Japanese do do some really nice schemes, don't they? Yeah. Just nice. It, Rick's got a style of building, and I like it. That's a good example of yeah. a nice, clean, tidy. But equally weathered build. It's not, you know, it's just really nice, clean build. Yes, lightly weathered. Lightly weathered, that's the phrase. I wonder if it's coincidence that they bought out the Japanese version straight after Meng, sorry, Edard released the Japanese one, didn't they? Japanese yeah. boxing. It is, yeah. Again, it'd be interesting to do a proper side by side between obviously that kit and the old Hasegawa one. And I know, like, the old Hasegawa one, the great scheme of it is now what, 25 years old? 
Um, yeah. So Thanks. obviously this is brand new tool. It'd be interesting to see because I've always maintained and I've built loads of now the Hasegawa ones. You know that they've got really nice detail. They're quite simple in going together. You know, uh, I know this one's got some nice details around. Obviously, the cockpit, electronics, -y bits, and things like that as well. Where obviously the Hasegawa one doesn't. Um, but uh, it'd be interesting <laughs> to do a side by side comparison for surface detail. See what it's coming. I know out. Um, mine and Rick's were next to each other at the what was the show? One of the shows went to at the beginning of the year. Not which. Not which one? To mm -hmm. both on the Luftwaffe table, weren't they? Yeah. And. They were sort of very comparable with each other, you know, the... Mm. It's not different. Yeah. Like I said, but yeah, the, he's got his open so you could see the electronics bay behind the cockpit, but yeah. 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 Very nice indeed. Okay, so... Oh. Yeah, go cool. on. No, no, carry on. Oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> right, next up, we've got Simon, who's done a very nice intruder. Yeah. Which again... <laughs> Having done one very similar. <laughs> yeah, you got the up when you saw this yeah. one. I wonder where he got his inspiration from, from this one. <laughs> and I want to know, is it a tail sitter? That's why he's got his tail looked down. Yeah. Because <laughs> it is the, the way that everybody gets around that problem. Because I've always said, people have said to me when they built it, I like, you know, that you don't think of um, nose weight because of obviously with uh, the electronics bay in the front. So, mm. um, you know, it's like, just put the tail look down. Because they used to sit there with the tail look down on land anyway, so it's fine. So yes, makes for a good prop. Yeah, it does. you get lots and lots of pictures with this build, which is nice. Yes, very nice. It's another one of these like clean but weathered. Yeah. Builds. Yes, it's definitely cleaner than mine. Even though mine's now got ten years of dust on it. Mm. Was it? It's about seven years now. I did it ago, so. It's just a nice build because you get you, you get a really really good look at every angle. Yes, very nice indeed. Mm. Yeah, can't go wrong with an intruder. No, no. it is a good looking aircraft. The old drumstick, yeah. I like it. Uh, it has a charm. Hmm. Kind of radar them off. Yeah, but no, very nice job on that one. Good scheme, yeah. mm -hmm. great idea. Very mm -hmm. nice job. And again, because obviously the only thing he's done is um, used resin seats, which to be yeah. honest, it needs because yeah, mine's all stock and it shows. So, but say no. when, that when you built yours, was there? Eh? Was there anything that when you built yours? That you could before? probably use the seats from something else. I can't remember what mark of eject seats in them, but I think there was some around. But for some reason, I just elected to do harnesses and bits and pieces on mine and leave it. But mm. uh, yeah. It's nice job on the cockpit. So there's yeah, no very nice. And again, it's got all the wiring up on the top as well, which is yeah. nice. Aren't they the same as a F-14, aren't they? No, I don't think they are. I don't know, actually. Uh, no idea. I don't know if these are the Martin Baker 5s, and not the 7s. Isn't it Martin Baker 7s in Phantoms? I don't know, one or whatever. I can't remember now. But yeah, yeah, very nice indeed. Very, very cool. Good yeah. job. Uh, next up, one from me. This is from Ben. And again, it's quite nice because Ben's done a gorgeous F-16. Uh, this is obviously the big Tamiya 32nd one, which is a fantastic kit straight out of the box. But it just goes to show what a good job you can do straight out of the box. You don't need any extras. This kit is fantastic. All he's done is got a set of resin uh, bod covers front and rear in, which actually make it. It looks really, really nice. So he's done a beautiful job on this one. Some really nice touches. Mm. Good, again, like nice weathering right the way through. It's just sort of normal day-to-day -day, uh, line jet type weathered, nothing fancy, uh, but it's all there. So it gives it that nice sort of, you know, used look. Uh, and again, he's done it with the engines removable and everything. So beautiful job on the dolly, which is a nice job on there iconic kit that isn't it it is it is a really good kit it's i stuff you know i know the tammy has brought out some really nice ones but i still think that's probably their best ever you know because it just it works and it goes together flawlessly and the attention to detail in the kit's beautiful like that with the footprints though yeah. i thought that was pretty <laughs> good though did like that i thought that was a nice one but no i think the thing is with this kit 
if you are new to modeling it wouldn't be a push to do it because for going together it's typical tamiya it's very very solid construction so everything goes together and if it doesn't there's usually a reason so it's you know you just have a bit of a look around and look for it but the gear is all good and solid with it and all those things which sometimes you sort of struggle with you know but it's all very very nicely done but it's got a really really nice job on that one I like that one yeah very nice very very nice and I need more photos for this one lee but i like this one he's done the uh inner diorama setting ooh, of ooh. a panther with the old crane job over the top i don't know if he's had a replacement turret but uh nice job but he's got a little diorama going on look the oil drums and you know tools and various bits Cool that. Yeah, we cool. Nice. We've only got three photos. Where's the more photos? More photos. More <laughs> but yeah, but I like the way he's putting like the uh, extra armor on the sides. Look, <laughs> he's got yeah. a little rack for it, putting them on there and everything else. Obviously, it's had a new cast turret with the marks on it and stuff like that. I just really thought that was quite an interesting one to do. But I'd love to see more of it. <laughs> so yes, yes, definitely yeah, need more, more photos. photos. Last up, we have this up to the top. Right. So this is another one, exactly the same as I've done, because Rob was doing his a uh, little bit before I got doing to mine. Um, and again, it's nice to see how people do different things. So again, he's got the lighting set in this one, um, you know, uh, and everything. Again, again, nothing against, obviously, this bill, because it's lovely. Um, but I don't have that, because my point is, mine's going to sit literally on a bookcase, so you won't be able to look in from the ends anyway. So unless you're going to get it out to have a look at it, it won't be that type of angle to see in there. But again, it's really nice with the uh, the lighting kit front and rear. But again, it's nice to see another version of. Yeah. But you've done a good job on that one. So congratulations in there as well. Yeah, well very done. Nice. Very, very nice. Well done, everybody. Very oh, good job. Where are you going to put it? <laughs> well, you know, Mike, you know where I've got... Well, I've, I did think about taking it upstairs, but actually it won't fit. All right. <laughs> I'd have to so make a custom-made shelf up in the office. So um, I, what I'll probably end up doing, when I have my sh bit of a jostle around in here, it's going to live in there, in my shelf at the back. So uh, it'll go in there. I'm going to move those yeah. ones out. When I come up to you, the bombers will come down, the ones in the cabinet will go up. So it yeah. will all go that way, I think. Um, yeah. It's the same, same thing that puts me off building ships, because they're the sort of same sort of, similar sort of size aren't they where do yeah. you put them they're so yes. big depends what scale you build you can go for like one seven hundred scale or whatever they do mm. not so yeah. big yeah no when you get <laughs> tiny, tiny his eyes aren't going to go that <laughs> far <laughs> yeah four magnifiers like this go to etch railings yeah, and go to etch crew scale and you know <laughs> no radars <laughs> and mm. guns I was thinking of a 70 second scale Bismarck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The only thing you could do with this one, you could literally just store it like that. Oh, someone's forgot oh. again. <laughs> you could lend it to the mayor for his ceremony. Hello, we're live on air. <laughs> See you Hello. Hello. Hi. Hello. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> She's avoiding her clap. She's got out of work early. <laughs> so yes so yeah you can store it like this if you wanted to so it doesn't take up massive amount of room which is probably a bit more ideal and then obviously when you get people round and you want to show it off you can just then um, plug it in and uh, away you go so but I am quite impressed because this bar system that it goes in is solid not that I'd probably want to hold it by one thing on its own which I won't but you can get away with two because to be honest most of the day it's been a bit like this instead work out my distances so you can't get away with uh taking a ship apart like that can't can you unless you're building titanic well you could yeah just uh, just do the titanic but it, it hey. will sit like that so you don't need the center one it will get away without it i say the front end social distancing from the engines <laughs> yeah that's it well it's all yeah it's one meter apart is it, is it... <laughs> <laughs> is it right distance yes that's it i'll be going around with everyone with it i was saying for the social distancing what you can do is just get a giant hula hoop and some braces and then you can just walk around <laughs> it and no one can come near you hey it'd be like it's a knockout yeah that's it it's what you need to do yeah just have that you'd be absolutely fine <laughs> all right so um we got the clap in five minutes 
Uh, <laughs> so we'll just get in there uh, first. Right, so a couple of questions. Uh, has anyone done any modeling today or just been uh, trying to weather a British Sherman tank from Sicily? Oh, very nice. How's your Sherman doing, Matt? Done any more to it? Yeah, I deckled it. Oh, them decals were shocking. Just reminded me because you were doing it earlier and it was like, ah, hold right on. There you go. I put all, well, I mean, six decals on it last night. <laughs> you like that, tanks, don't you? Just because you don't have to decal. Uh, it is, but they're not great decals, if I'm honest. I weren't overly impressed. Right. But they have gone down. I've put a bit of solution on them and they do seem to have settled, but. But yes. They're just kit decals, were they? No, no, they're them, um, the ones I got from AK. Oh, right. I don't know, they seem a bit thick, I think. Hmm. Yeah, but they're on and they'll do. So, hmm. yeah, how long we got? So what? it's um, end of the... Is it end uh, of June? End of June, but, oh. yes. Jeez, I better We're going to run to the end of June, so you might be able to just about get in there. Uh, yeah, I've got fingered into doing that behind the me, me started on the diorama. Yes. Ignore the panther tank, by the way. I was just using that for um, perspective of what I want to, to do. You've been sitting there on the floor like this. I'm not quite that. He's got a monocle like it. I'm not that ignorant. <laughs> I was just working out how I was going to uh, place the buildings and what else I'm going to do. I think I'm going to have another building that's coming here. I'm going to have that one at that angle and then one coming around here. Yeah, yeah. And then like a semicircle of a pavement type road area. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. We'll, we will see. I was looking for another building today, but I'm, I don't know. I might have to either build one out of foam or, yeah, to for what I want. We'll see. We'll see anyway. Very nice. Yeah. Um... Uh, hold on, uh, where are I? Just saw one. Great review of the IBG 170 second scammel fill. Very nice, yes. Hold on, I should be de showing it. In my excitement of also doing it yesterday, didn't help. Sorry, review of that's up today. <coughs> if you haven't seen it, fantastic, beautiful, amazing. Yeah. I can't yeah. say any more than I said in the review, really. It is that good. I'm, I'm totally, totally impressed. You know, it's just, I'm amazed these days what they can do with 172nd scale, you know, from a molding point of view and just the engineering that goes into kits like that. Because you can you imagine that like 20 years ago? It'd have been oh, like, you know, six wheels, a one piece sort of chassis thing, all like, and that would have been it. But no glass. No glass, <laughs> yeah, that's it. It just would have been horrible. But um, no, it's, uh, it's absolutely beautiful. One of the finest 70 second scale kits I've seen, uh, vehicles like that, definitely. Cause it's just, it's a mini me of the big one. We were mm. talking about it before we came on air, weren't we? Like the quality of 70 second scale armor now. I mean like, yeah, it was, that's why that's that. Cause it was mm. down, you know, talking about that, but yeah, the come on leaps and bounds, aren't they? Armor has, we yeah. always talk about aircraft and you know, how they've come on, but. Um, is definitely I think we should do high. this as a team. We'll do a 172nd scale something. Um, as in armour and vehicle, not like a ship. <laughs> yeah. I'd do, I'd do that. Yeah. So I was looking at the ICM stuff in 72nd because they do some 172nd um, armour bits and bobs. So hmm. I won't mind seeing what they're like to be, you know, have a look at them. Because I've got the model collect um, T80, which I think Krista sent me um, as well. Yeah. And that was a beautiful kit. That was very nice. So well, I, I think we should make a pack to do a 72nd armoured thing. Yeah, I can put it on a smaller base than I've got. They're a bit more compact, aren't they? Yeah, that's but it. But I'm interested to see how that scandal stacks up against the Airfix version. Hmm. Because they also well, do the um, artillery. Back time. To what? Is it back time? Back time. Oh, that's why I told you that time. Don't we can't oh. really catch. Yeah. <laughs> bravo. Bravo, bravo, man. Bravo, bravo. Top job. Well done, everyone. All doing a fantastic job. Oh, crikey, they're popping the spirit out of the front here today. Are they in the party? <laughs> must no, be. Like, yeah. We must be like the Grinch household because Tams is normally working and I'm in here on a Thursday, so it's like <laughs> they just yeah. think, look at that ass there in darkness. <laughs> <laughs> well, done. <laughs> well done everybody yes well done everybody congratulations 
doing a great job. Everyone's doing well. We're coming out the other side, hopefully. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I think that could be something for later on in the year. Why don't we all grab a 70-second scale, a bit of armour, and we'll give it a whirl. We'll do it later on in the year, can't we? Mm. I'd have try it for turkey shoot. Yeah, turkey shoot, something like that, for later in the year, yeah. I mean, I don't think we'll actually get it built over a weekend now uh, because they're a bit more complex. But it I was going to say, yeah, if you're doing that, you'll be a bit longer. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, Turkey Shoot might not be a bad chat for it. Hmm, definitely. Uh, question I'm returning to the hobby after many years. Uh, I'd like to try some weathering with AK weathering pencils. Uh, when should I use them before the first clear coat uh, or after the last clear coat? Okay, um, well, we've all got the pencils. Anyone use them? Still, no. <laughs> you know what? no we've all I got them, but none of us have used them. I am going to try them on this. Yeah. To be honest, when I, when I get round to weathering and stuff, I will try them on that and, and see if I like them or not. I think, you know, the thing is with them, let just grab a few here, which is a good point. Where are all my weathering pencils? I've lost a load of them somewhere. Oh, on a flat coat, in a gloss coat, because I can't see so, how I'm going to stick to a yeah, I've used them a couple of times. It's not my style of weathering because um, I don't do a lot of armor. I think really if you're an armor guy uh, or something else like that, that's really where this would come into its own because you can do the very nice delicate effects like rain marks, uh, grime and that type of thing, which you could do with getting right in there and putting it on. You could probably do it on sci-fi to be honest, didn't think about it with this thing. Um, but again, it's one of those ones where I think you need to uh, practice it, you know, get used to it, understand how it works. It's no different from my weathering wash or using oil washes or pigments or anything. It's, you know, you need to play with it, experiment with it, find out what works and doesn't. And to be honest, I probably haven't given it a fair shout yet. Um, you know, but I've given it the couple of times I did, I gave it a little go when we did the uh, book missile system. Um, and again, it's one of those ones where it's very subtle. That's my point. You know, if you want nice subtle effects, then yeah, these are great for it. But if you want, you know, sort of big marks, you might as well just go with oils uh, and do it that way. Um, okay. Kev, our mate, who does a lot of armor, he swears by him, he loves them, he uses them all the time. But I think from user wing point of view, I would use them over a flat coat. You need something for them to catch on to. So a bit like when I did this, um, I put a flat coat right the way over this entire thing, like a dead flat coat mixed with white paint, just to sort of knock it back a bit. And then we did some more oil work and obviously the oil work sticks a lot more and it gets caught in that texture. Um, and it probably gave a better effect, if I'm honest, when I was doing that later stages weathering. So that's really when you want to use things like these as well, purely just so it's got grip. You know, you can actually put it where you want it and it doesn't wipe away so easy and it goes on quite smoothly as well. So, yeah. But yes, definitely. Yeah, let's give them, a, like I say, a bit of a, a mm. fair trial and use them in anger. Like I say, I'm going to have to do a bit of research properly how to use them. I don't know. If I'm honest, I've never tried anything like that before so yeah, yeah well, we'll i was talking to kev about because kev uses them a lot and he's the only person i know who i've spoken to about it and he was saying it's great because you because it's a pencil you can get right in all the areas and then you can just mix a little bit of water and get mm -hmm. great effects with it um you know and again it's that thing like he was saying about storage equipment and uh yeah around turrets and in those areas where traditionally it's very difficult to get in there these are great for it because it's not a problem yet if you're in there with oils you know you accidentally touch somewhere else and it leaches off and computer reaction drags it round where you don't want it with these you don't have that problem so that's the nice thing for them so i think my reservation with them is is clean up and tide marks mm. that's why i'm worried about that using them getting tide marks and then being yeah. stuck with it to be honest yeah but you can just clean them with water can't you mm. yeah yeah i'm uh, just saying my there's reservation there's a water colour pencils yeah, yeah. Yeah, with oil paints and stuff, it's quite forgiving, isn't it? Because you can leave it and then just bit of white spirit or whatever and just clean it all up. So, yeah, yeah. I say I'll give it a go. And they're quite good for doing scratches. Yeah. I do. I've got the yeah. got the metallics and the greys, and I've scratched up cockpit sills with them, and that works quite well. It's almost the last thing I do in the model. Mm. The flat, or the last last flat coat. I just <laughs> go around and put little tiny scratches in cockpit areas. Very nice. Cool. All right for that. We just use them raw without water. Yeah. Uh, hold on, my things moved. Uh, oh god. 
hold on the thing's just loaded through i didn't think there's many questions but i'm a bit wrong uh, how's our chat we got any in there question who makes the best 172nd su24 trumpeter or zvezda or dragon trumpeter because zvezda is dragon's kit reboxed i think so i would um i'd say the trumpy one it's the newer one of the lot i think scale mates will tell you properly but i'm sure but I said the Zrevster one is the Dragon Kit Reboxed. Yeah. Uh, Phil, what sort of glue would you use to attach those acetate windows on the IBG kit? Yeah, it'll be crystal clear job uh, for that one. There is another little trick, to be honest, and I used it on here, and I just don't know how long it would last, though, is that I've got... It's here somewhere, but I just can't see it. I could think it was here. <laughs> I've gone. I've got a roll of double-sided tape, um, and obviously the great thing is you can cut it into really thin strips. So you could like just go to the edges and then just dunk and put it in in one. Uh, so you could put like a bead of it round. But if you've got a sharp knife like I did in there, so I used one mil plastic card for the frames on it. So all I did was put one mil of the actual um, strip. And then you put it on, peel off the back, and then with that acetate, we just stuck it straight to it. So you could get away with doing something like that in there as well. Um, but again, those acetate windows, you could like, you know, they are a beautiful fit, it looks like, for it. So I'll probably be more inclined to PVA glue around it with crystal clear, let it somewhat dry to go a little bit tacky, and then pop them in there, and then cut, you know, a cotton bud with, you know, your tongue bit of spit on it mm. to warm it up and just wipe it off so you just sort of wipe to the edges so it's all off to the edges and i think it'd be absolutely fine no yeah, problem at all no problem right mrp or attacker orange oh attacker every time there you go yeah yes yeah. definitely i think the better value for money yeah because you get a lot more mileage or coverage or whatever. It's the right and, you can, and you can thin it to how you want rather than it being pre-thinned for airbrushing. So if you want it to slightly thicker, you've got no chance with MRP have you? because it's already Pre there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I've got your email, Adrian. I guess. Mm. Thank you. Uh, Phil and team, uh, have you uh, tried the new MIG shaders? No. Uh, and what do you think about it? Well, I'm sorry, I'm out of the loop. What have they done? What have they released this time? I think it's like oil. Oh, is it? Oil, isn't it? No, oh, no, these are the shaders. Of the, that's the oil brushes and there's something out now called shaders. I don't know. I, I, all he's done is put a video on YouTube about it today. I've had to use them and I've not watched it, so I've got no idea what the are or what the eight is of them. I don't know until I've seen the vid. Yes. Ask us tomorrow. I'll watch it and tell you what. Just tell you what you think. <laughs> oh, because there's all sorts. There's, there's stuff coming out called shifters from Vallejo and oh, they're making all these things up, which is basically just a flip paint. To me, from what I've seen, looks like for Gundams and sort of that that sort of. Oh, right, yeah. Have you seen them? Where it's God, they've been around decades. They have. We're just like a fluorescent sort of. It's, yeah, it's basically like a micro fluorescent where it flips from purple to blue to green. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. They used to have our Nissans about. Yeah. Yeah, years. Nissans. Yeah, with thingy for it. You got it. Yes. <laughs> so there's nothing new in the paint world, but obviously Vallejo's downscaled it shall we say yes um, yeah. uh, what is the best primer for plastic canopies uh, and what is the best for polishing products for removing scratches from canopies Ooh, a glory polishing stick yeah <laughs> well yeah that would be my way you need one of these or if you're really lucky you might have one of these <laughs> oh, oh yeah <laughs> really lucky if you're like, really yeah. lucky Willy Wonka's golden ticket. That it is. is. And, and or Tamir Polishing Compound. Look, yeah. Nathan's just rubbing people's nose in it now. <laughs> <laughs> Willy Wonka's chocolate factory. <laughs> um, yeah, the uh, thing is, uh, for primers around for the um, uh, the canopy, I take it, do you mean for spraying onto it? If so, I 
tend to do the inside color because I cheat. So what I'll tend to do is if you're doing, um, you know, just like a normal fighter aircraft's perhaps cockpit, the inside color, that's assuming it's that MIG I was doing and it's got that turquoisey blue. So master canopy, I'll put from the outside, because I've masked it, a coat of turquoise blue onto it. So, and then afterwards, it'll just get the primer coat of what the rest of it's had. Um, sometimes I'll put black on as well, just to color fast it, so it makes the plastic framework look absolutely solid. Otherwise, if it's translucent, you get light coming through it, it looks plasticky and doesn't look real. So sometimes I might put black in there, uh, and then it gets the same primer coat as the rest of the models getting at the same time. And then obviously top coat will go through, so forth and so on. Um, you have and to be careful though with some, I mean, I, I did it on my, uh, was it my 189 I did it, I am in Hitaka. Pre-colored pre the canopy in Hitaka. Um, and it didn't bond to the uh, clear plastic very well. Oh. Turned to having to remask it again and going over with the Tamiya. That's because um, you didn't cut your Tamiya tape. You didn't I, go I, around, I, did no, you go did. around with it, the blade? It, it, and... it, it, was, it was terrible, the whole lot came off. Oh, right. And, ev and everyone was saying, oh, it's because you've used Attacker to do mm. your uh, original uh, coat with. So then we went over with Tamiya and went over with Tamiya and it was like, yeah, fine then. Oh, the one weakness with the tacker is they do have to go on the primer. Yeah, they do prefer a primer, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. They do peel off their plastic. What was the next wing cockpit? Black in it. Sorry. Sorry, what? What? What's, What's the sorry? colour of the next wing cockpit? Sphincter says what? <laughs> <laughs> what colour is the next wing cockpit? Black. Yes, black I think they are just black. Yeah. I'm so just trying to think. It's one of those brain freeze moments. They are. They're just black. The entire they're thing's black, black with there. lots of shiny lights that don't do anything. Well, they're doing Luke's head. <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't know, Roger, because he's just asking about the attacker blue line when we weren't going it yet, because we've got to order them. And the attacker, as far as I know, has only just reopened. So. With, um, it might be a, a while, well, you know. Uh, cool. How would you go about painting raised detail on a 132nd instrument panel? I'm finding it a challenge. Two options. One, buy a Color Photo H1 and sand it off. That's, a, that's my preferred route, especially if you've got bezels and colours and stuff like that. But yeah, you can go through. I technically dry brush if that's the case. If I've got to do an instrument panel that's got raised detail, I'll dry brush it. So you start off with its base colour, assume it's black, okay, and then literally dry brush right over it with a very light grey. Uh, to go through and then if you're doing bezels and things uh, that are colored on the outside so some of them obviously like they're yellow and then go into red or they've got green on them you can actually use my usual ways to use a cocktail stick just into a little bit of paint and then just from the inside you just rub it slightly to the outside uh, and you get that effect around them and stuff like that and then it's just a case of going in with detail painting tiny brushes and things and picking out switches and those types of things to be honest those pens that i used all on here the posca pens they're great for that because you literally just like switch 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 red switch green switch blue switch and you can just do all your de details and do it that way so it's pretty straightforward it's funny, you know, just something about that. Um, you know, I was on about the weathering pencils. Hmm. I've seen people use them as well for doing dials and stuff. Hmm. You know, to yeah. So, there's loads of ways, isn't there? Uh, question When you mask up, yeah. how do you stop getting ridges on the masked line? You can't. You're always going to get a ridge. You're, you're always going to get a ridge. You're going to have to have something because obviously by its nature of how it is, what I normally do, if you've got something, is just lightly sand it. Yeah. If you just want to blend it down, as I say, to be honest, I usually use a weathering stick or you know the polisher, but on the green side, and just give it a rub and it would be fine because it's not enough to take the paint off, but you will just, just get that rid of that edge or you won't get rid of it because obviously it's a step in paint, but you can just you know get rid of a, an edge off of it uh, and fade them in a little bit. And obviously, the more paint you put on, the bigger the step will be. So if you sort of like frugal with your paint, so like you're not flooding it and putting too much on, you won't get yeah as much of a step, will you? No. No, no that's cool. And, and obviously, I think your paint is as well. Yeah. 
but the flip side to it is you don't want it too thin because then it can track under your mask tape and yeah. then you've defeated the object really so it is a fine line but always spray away from the masking not into it yes and also as well when you're spraying anything and if you've got masking tape don't put down a really wet coat especially to start with Tamiya yeah. tape's got that blocking technology I think built into it so as soon as it, it gets a bit moist it will seal up but if you go in and yeah. flood it straight away it, it's going to be no use it'll just go straight under it and it'll bleed through but normally I always put down a nice little just a quick dusty coat over it and go off elsewhere and then that way it will seal it and it stops you getting creep underneath and stuff like that yeah yeah uh, question well, for the car builders i'm going to build my first car uh building 30 plus years uh the tamiya lexus uh lfa the wheels and the kit are like aluminium color uh but uh the wheels should be gloss brass is that even a color uh, and the rib edges and the spokes are aluminium. Any idea how to mask the edges after painting the main part black? Fine line tape. Very fine line <laughs> tape. Or get yourself off. one of these. If you haven't got yeah. a, get one of them and then it goes down to 0.4 mil. So, yeah. Mm. It's, it's a fiddly job whichever way you look at it. I was going to say, the thing is, I don't. there's no quick way to that, is it? No, it's, that's the spot. No, you can't brush it or anything. No. You just you've got to sit there and mask them up and then paint them and then remask them and paint them and and go through the motions of doing it. So yeah, you've got your job. You got your work cut, but they look stunning when they've done. They look really good. But yeah, there's no shortcut. I'm afraid you don't know how to do it. Yeah, I think that's the thing. Sometimes you literally have one option and that's it for those types of things. Yeah. He meant black, not brass. Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's the spelling error. <laughs> oh, uh, question. Aside from Tamiya and Val, are there any other kit makers that also make a line of paints under their own brand name? I think there is, isn't there? Most of them. Italy. Italy do it. Oh, Italy, yeah, yeah. I've got oh, it but... here. Yeah. You don't see them so often, though, do you? Teslas. No, they still make kits. Uh, I don't know, actually. <laughs> That's me. Um, There's Airfix and Hombrola sister brands. Like. AK. <laughs> oh, yeah. They're not really a kit manufacturer, though, are they? Well, no, they're a reboxer. Um, uh, oh, so does there have to make some paint? But can I get them in Russia? Yes, they do. Yes, yes. yes. They're on yeah. their boxes, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. yeah that was yeah. it. I knew the one. I think that's it, though. Tammy and Ravel are the only major ones that yeah it's do, the Atari one seen, no. i've used this stuff and it's it's probably one of those that needs a lot of playing with again they've got that awful white th uh, thinners for it it's like milk and all oh, of this yeah. thing and yeah but if you want your money's worth it is because this stuff's like toothpaste it would actually give model a uh, model color a run for its money it's proper thick stuff so i just can't get over it though but yeah, yeah never seen it on sale yeah no well what they said was because it comes out of the same place of tamiya they're yeah. not going to do paint lines because it will clash and they sell t tons of tamiya so why mm. which I, in a funny way though i don't understand because that's a proper acrylic mm. where obviously the other ones are hybrid alcohol based acrylic so it wouldn't technically clash because it's not the same paint it's completely different yeah but i don't know I'm not the importer, so I don't make them decisions. <laughs> Perhaps it's just another headache of putting labels on for the staff in the warehouse. Yeah, like, some poor oh, schmuck's got to sit in the warehouse. Oh, yeah. That is just the worst job ever. Sorry, yeah, you can get it to their repaints. You can get black. So you probably get them off Amazon and stuff. But Apologies for the people who are seeing the dickheads in the uh, YouTube chat. Oh, right. I'm deleting them banning as quick as I can but there's a few in there today clearly oh dear so yes we've got the happy bunch in have we yeah so uh, when using custom digital masks are there scales to take into consideration so 135th scale armor 
I'm thinking about either 148 scale or 172nd scale aircraft uh, mass set for the Foxbat. Uh, are you thinking of, because I've seen them online, Sorry. you can get like photo etched digital mass sets now. Have you seen those? No. Yeah, somebody's released someone somewhere and it's literally just a square of digital ones uh, right. and the rest of it. But, you know, I, again, it's all very well, but it's like a square of it. So it's like if you're trying to get that, 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 to, that, that, that up, yeah, yeah, I don't know. That's the whole point. I can't understand how you. The only thing I did think what you could do in the hindsight side of it is actually put down a bit of 40 mil Tamiya tape, put this thing over it and use it as a template. Yeah, <laughs> you know, okay. do it that way rather than putting it on your model. But yeah, yeah. Um, so yes, uh, but no, uh, you know, technically, if you're thinking of the actual mask sets that you buy, then obviously you'll just buy for that particular whichever one you're doing. If you're doing a 48 scale fox back, I would just get. Uh, I think somebody actually does do it. Didn't somebody do a digital yeah. mask set for it? Maybe it's a box box that do the. Hmm. Don't yeah. flankers, that. Because Nathan's an expert on that after doing his flanker. Yeah, it's a piece of vinyl. All oh, that's crazy. That was me. <laughs> I mean, you can get them for big ones as well, can't you? Hmm. Like these pre-cut mass things. I think you have to get some for that aircraft, otherwise. Yeah, you yeah. want to get the one for the aircraft. I think it'd be a lot easier. So, I've got a uh, check digital camera for a MiG twenty-one. I could have done that, and that'd still be. Painting it. <laughs> uh, Christmas. Um, Mike just asked me a question. If you brush paint with Vallejo model colour, uh, do you thin it with an owl? And if so, how much? I've just thin it with water. In the wet palette. Um, do you add any retarder or anything to it? Or? No, because the wet palette keeps it wet, damp. So, no, not really. What about surface tension or anything? Is it? Never have any problem with it, to be honest. Because I don't know how much do you thin it, and it's, I mean, got sort of a state of my wet palette, it's a bit, <laughs> bit of a mess, but um, you want it, it, it's, again, if you're using a dry palette to a wet palette, it's different, if that makes sense, you, you paint thinness. On a wet palette, if you, it's about the right consistency when it pulls back in on itself. You know, when you brush it out onto the actual um, paper that the, the paint's sitting on with your paintbrush, it'll it'll draw back in on itself and that's about the right consistency. I'll have to do a, a, a demo. I'm going to remake a wet palette and I'll, I'll go What are you going to do when uh, Lydia goes back to school wants a sandwich box? Yeah, let's give the kids the sandwiches <laughs> back. I'll give it a wash. Might need a rinse. <laughs> yeah, she'll be fine. <laughs> Just a quick question on Alf uh, chat. One of the guys asked, is the uh, Tamiya 48 Spitfire canopy mask pre-cut? No, it's not. None of the Tamiya do pre-cut no. masks. No. Yes, none of them do it. Um, I've got one here. Uh, I'm new to the hobby and love your material and have learned a lot from them. At the moment, I mostly use Revel Aqua Paints in my airbrush. What is your experience with them? Funny enough, this does come up quite a bit, and we say they're fantastic for hand painting. For airbrushing, they are a proper handful. Um, you know, they can be uh, a little bit finicky because they're quite thick, that's the trouble. But you certainly get your money's worth out of them because you thin them and thin them. But I don't think they're really designed for airbrushing. So they don't thin that easy. Uh, but for hand painting, they're very nice. Because we've said about this, haven't we, with them? They're quite a... Uh... Nathan's used them. Nathan I've never used them. I, a bit of retarder will help, but they are hard work to spray. Mm. Not, in it. It's not easy. Lots mm. of thinners, a little bit of retarder. Mix it outside of your airbrush in a little glass jar or something. And then it just you get lots of tip dry and it's just they're not they're not easy to spray. Mm. I don't think they're really meant for airbrushing them, are they? I think no, more, I don't think they are. I think they're more hand painting. Up brush painting. Because yeah. so. brush painting, they're great. You know, I have got a couple of bottles of it down there, but... Yeah. I think yeah. I've got one and it was a particular green I needed that <laughs> the instructions were quoting that colour and I thought, oh, blah, blah, I'll just use that and... Mm. Yeah, I did, I did airbrush it, but... Mm. Yeah, it's... 
Yeah, I will want to start spraying these again. <laughs> Thank you. I'm going down yes. the uh, Humbra acrylic, acrylic range. Um, <laughs> oh, these ones. Ooh. I've got to spray these either. Yeah, I've got one of those as well. These Have you come spray that? They're airbrushing on the side. But they're like um, extra acrylics. They've got like crispy bits on it. Yeah. I think they're latex based, the Airfix one. Yeah. The Humbra one. Okay, Kenneth says he's going to be starting building his Heller 1 to 150th. Okay, I'm going to butcher this because I have no idea. Uh, a gorge fork tail ship. The sails are vac form. Um, uh, I'm not sure if I'm wasting my time trying to make them look realistic or replace them. Any ideas? You can do. Um, sails and that quite well it's something i played with when i did the underside of the um Sopwith camel um because i was trying to recreate that sort of fabric look in plastic and make it semi-translucent as well um and i actually i was quite happy with how it turned out uh in the great scheme of it and one of my thoughts was if i was ever to do a sailing ship and most of them to make it look nice have sort of that form sails you could use the same technique with it and go through um, and have it so you could even do like the corners um, and obviously the beaded edges where it's like the fabric is like double layered is slightly thicker the same techniques I think I would use that I'd use for doing the, the sort of sail cloth underside colors of uh, the actual camel I would do exactly the same way so that might be an idea Hold on. somebody's own yeah mm. Look, Lola <laughs> Shut up, shut up. So yes. Hold on, I will I will give you a small example of what it, you could achieve whilst the dogs are barking. Um hold on. So by that I mean if we go to in here and we go to the camel. Where's the camel? There's the camel. There's the camel. When we did the underside in here to get this sort of effect if you yeah. used to do that on a vac form piece of plastic i think you could get away with the same type of effect so this is basically just going in with a light color so i used pretty much sail which is what tamir xo 55 and then mask it and then over here we just then airbrushed a slightly darker shade over um, and then literally it's just a case of going through the motions of oils and stippling to get that type of fabric-y effect if that makes sense uh, and you could try and do sails like that so it's got that sort of it looks translucent clearly it's not because it's solid plastic but it gives it that type of effect you know so that was i was quite happy with the way that turned out so you know you're really going for the sort of this sort of sail effect but you know other worn areas i don't know so, yeah. I think that works. I always think that works really well because, like, the effect of the ribs showing through. Yeah. It, like, like you say, it's a solid, solid bit of plastic, but it gives the illusion the of the illusion of it being, yeah, translucent. I've seen it where on the other, on the top of the wing, they've done a really faint sort of rondel or cross or whatever, so it looks like you can like see, see through, through it. it. Yeah. yeah. Brilliant that way as well. Yeah. Especially on the bottom wing. Hmm. Um. So yeah, so that might be a, a you know a type of sort of idea to go with, um, and yeah. but you know go something like there because again I think you know unless you have the sails down you are sort of stuck with it a bit. Yeah. You know yeah. with your options are quite limited unless you do make them with fabric and roll them up and have it as if sails down but you could put them in and try that type of a technique and see how you get on with that. Yeah. Hmm. Again, there's probably lots of tutorials around if you. Yeah. If if you do have a look. Uh, Victor says, Phil and team, what is the best SU-25 and 148 scale? Well, your one option at the moment is the old Capo kit. Um, give it a couple of weeks. Then we're hoping to get the Kitty Hawk version in and seeing what that's like and if it goes together. Yeah. So, so yes, we will see on um, that one. Yeah, Graham's asking about the wet palette. About what is it and can I do a demo? I'll tell you what, we'll, we'll sort out doing one next week when we're on, even if it's on our show or something else. Yeah, I'll put the overhead yes. on and get the yeah. 
I to put it's the dead easy to put. There's nothing expensive. You can do them as cheap as chips to 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 do one because you can buy a ready-made one. But I don't see the point when you can just make your own. So yeah, that's right. It's one straight. of those. It's so easy to make it's, one. It's yeah. Yeah, yeah. A quick trip down the supermarket, and you've got everything that you need to do it as well. So. Um, right, Yes, has got a question for me as a, well, I won't go that far, but as an expert, expert car painter, X. Yeah, X car painter. Has anybody got that? Because that's just flipped up on there. Ah, oh, it's gone now. And, um, it's lost it, it's just flipped. Yeah, oh, have, I have made up a spray base for spraying that draws in overspray and dust. A tray with water on uh, in it on the grid. I was told this is a good way to extract the dust, or am I wrong? It's just to keep the dust down. I mean, there was a trick of like wetting the floor in the spray booth, mm. just to keep the dust down, um, or, or wherever you're painting. Again, it's like Phil said. I think you mentioned it yesterday. Wasn't yeah, it? About right. yesterday, weren't we? Yeah, like dampening down your, your spray area and stuff. Um, you don't need to obviously be like swimmingly wet, but it's just obviously just to just to wait the dust down to stop it shooting up when you're spraying. So mm. Mm. also, I think for you know, not be funny for you in a automotive point of view, you're maneuvering and walking, but also you're dragging airlines as well. It's probably it was, you, yeah, it yeah, was no but, for that because it used to you know the chance are you can flick water up onto your whatever yeah. you're painting because you're dragging an airline like you say around a spray booth. Yeah. So. It's a bit different. I mean, it's a bit old school way of doing it, really. I mean, obviously, modern spray ovens are the extraction and everything's fantastic on them, so you don't really need to do it. Mm -hmm. um, again, I think as long as you've got a clean area that you're spraying in, your airbrush is clean, and you know, like the stuff we went through yesterday, I think you'll be fine. And again, any bits that are in it, you can flat out anyway. It's don't don't panic about it you can flat them out and repolish it or repaint it if needs be i've done it i did it with the art god knows how many times i've painted the roof on the plumbing lamborghini mm. <laughs> yeah. quite embarrassing to be honest but it's not a problem just make sure you you know if, if you have got to repaint that your paint's cured underneath before you start again but again just just good prep yes um, do you chaps think that the Revel of Germany kits are better than Revel USA or Tamiya kits? No. That's no. easy. No. <laughs> well, the Tamiya bit. Uh, don't forget, yeah. like, Revel USA and Revel of Germany, there's a, uh, an entire history of those two companies going back and forth and everything else. Um, and everything's now back to Germany. So, um, you know, the thing is, I we moan about revels pricing not so much their kits because their kits are to a certain price point normally um and usually they do some quite interesting subjects that other people don't do big stuff as well um so like the he 111 in 30 second actually wasn't a bad kit um you know but nathan's been going through it a lot recently with the tornado you just have to allow for their injection molding isn't as sharp as other manufacturers the tamiers of this world and people like that so you are going to get flash but that's the reason why that kit is probably a quarter of the cost it would be if tamia released it you know so there is obviously a little bit of give and take with it but i quite like their kits so they, they do release some good stuff and also they do rebox a lot of good kits so mm -hmm. with well, most of the um rebel american uh, rebel usa kits the, mon the monogram kits yes yeah yeah then they were separate. Then they were separate. separate. Then they had their own yeah. design. Um, yeah. Then they did did the um, they did the fortieth F eighteen F, didn't they? Which wasn't too bad. Better than the E because the E was a bit of a clunky one. Once it was the E that was a clunky one, and the F which wasn't too bad. And then what was the uh, Hell Diver? Was it that they released? It was quite decent as well. Come on. Well, some decent ones, they they did do some good stuff as well. But I think obviously Revel USA, they had a more active market with the uh, NASCARs and touring yeah. car owning type things. That's what their bread and butter of their business was. Um, as I say, when I had my run in with them years ago, I had well, very long chats into the night with their CEO. Uh, about it and everything and he was explaining obviously the differences and things like that and he's a very interesting guy to talk to um, but yes 
Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. How, how hot is uh, do you have your water for Declan? I just have mine tepid. Mm. Straight out of the kettle. <laughs> no, don't do that because you'll melt your decals. They'll stretch. No, uh, uh, no hotter than a. Oh, it's, it's you get your hot. elbow in it and test it. Yeah. Back yeah. of the wrist. Do a cup of tea when it's ready to drink. Yeah. About that hot. Like I always say with them, I often talk about it when I'm doing it. Like I say, if you have it too hot, what can happen is, and I've had it happen to me as well, the decals physically stretch. And then as they cool, they go out of out of whack. So I've had roundels, which are no longer roundels. They're ovals uh, mm. going on planes where they've gone out of shape. Uh, and the thing is, if it's cold, what can happen then is that as it's releasing from the carrier film, certain areas don't give and then they crack and they split. So if you ever have the situation where your decal falls apart and shatters, that can be because it's going into cold water. So the decal is very brittle because it's in cold. So in some ways, the warm water softens the decal and helps it come away as well. So I know Phil was joking, but probably the baby bath water, probably not a bad. Yeah. 38 temperature is, is it? Mm. Yes, anywhere between 34 and 38 degrees would be fine. People would be buying thermometers now. The thing is, a lot of us use, I don't, I must admit, I know you guys do though, they get a, um, a coffee pot warmer, isn't it? A coffee mug warmer. Uh, and obviously you just put your deck of water onto it so it keeps the deck of water warmer longer. I think that's a great idea. Well, it's just a flask and keep mm. topping your deckle water. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Coffee warmer is a brilliant idea. But the coffee warmer, you've got your mug warmer and you put your, your mug on it. You just, instead of putting your mug on it, put your deck water on it and it'll keep it warm. Yeah. So. There's a question for Nathan. Just got the new uh, 108 out of quarantine pile. Would oh, these have been used through the war or only early 40 to 43? No real info. Could find unusually. Uh, I don't know if it's the same person that asked on the forum. There are some Chris. that were in the, the Luftwaffe have got loss records, of things that are destroyed, lost, shut down, whatever. Yeah. And there are a couple, like a few 108s destroyed in 1945. But one or two, a few yeah. there. Now, don't ask me what units are markings, because all I did is I, I skimmed yeah. through just looking for aircraft types. But a 108D, one. According to Wikipedia, mm -hmm. the 108 was retired in 1945. Yeah, with the rest of the German Air Force. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. Hey. laughs> I was going to say that. That was quite common at that point. <laughs> and if not, it flew to South America. Yeah. Um, somebody's asking about the Kitty or Cashew 25 and why we're going to stock it and can they pre order it. To be honest, I've got no price on it. I don't know when we're getting it. <laughs> yeah. We will get them because I'm curious to see what it's like and obviously Phil wants to do a review. So we will be getting it in, but I've got no information on anything about that kit at the minute. Mm. So you just have to bear with us until it comes in. Yeah. Uh, which will be fun. Somebody's saying about the what Jez had asked about about the tray attracting dust. Can't see how it. I just think it means like to keep the dust down. Just I know, to, obviously, in big factories, especially when they're doing powder coating and stuff like that, they have waterfalls, don't they? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and but they, they spray, spray against them, so they basically it catches it and drags it down. Yeah. Uh, so it's yeah. just the circulation of water um, and that's just because it, it's a it's a better way of doing it than extracting air so some of them have like extractors behind so it goes through like a mist of water as well as air falling but that i think yeah. is supposed to be more of a cleanup thing but that's more i think the heavy duty industrial painting uh, yeah. way of doing it than anything we do in the hobby i used to work for a company years ago that got like literally the whole wall was a, was a waterfall, waterfall yeah they spray it into then it was like then went into a big filter thing and then sort of like filtered out and then sort of like blown out yeah until they built a car showrooms behind us mm -hmm. and all, <laughs> all the paint 
They love it's that, the, yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you what, no. my house is white at the moment. They're demolishing this factory next to us at the moment, and it is literally horrendous. I was showing the guys earlier, but every time they've got these huge industrial, massive, you know, grabber things, and it looks like a claw, and it's hacking through, but every time it takes a bite and it falls, the dust's coming off it, it's coming this way. So, you know, our roof out the back here, it, you can't, it's like night under it at the moment because it's covered in dust. It needs to rain to get it off. But my car, you can write your name in it it's absolutely covered in dust so you're charging for cleaning well do you know yeah. what funny enough we were saying that it was a bit like you know i only had the windows clean like last week and now you look at them and they're just dusty on the outside so we could do with it raining here really wash it away a bit yeah. question here when accurate miniatures first released kits were uh, the, the new high standard in the hobby how do you think they stand up today i still rate them i still think they're good kits yeah yeah the, their interior detail is second to none yes because what were they about late 90s were they 2000 yeah say yeah about that and say so their interior detail um, definitely stands up to today i think that's why where they came it was the big jump was their detail because yeah. we hadn't seen like it was always aftermarket wasn't it and like yeah. they recovered so you know that's your, your kit and it's like wow look at the detail in that that's like a proper like having aftermarket built in so yeah well i'd say like they're dauntless the hell diver obviously the b25 is i think the only one in that scale anyway but yeah fantastic kits yeah they're all the ones to get in that scale aren't they mm. yeah the vindicator that's another yeah. one if you can get up to that i mean i think um they've been re-released italia's re-released a few and academy mm. have released the dauntless i think and the vindicator they're worth grabbing, I think they're worth having. Mm. Wasn't uh, Eddard's... Oh, yak. What was it? Yak. I built it. Yak. Oh, Eddard did the yak, didn't they? What about the... Uh... Oh, how was it? Yeah, yeah, Dauntless, didn't they? they that was um, a Crip Miniatures one as well, wasn't it? Mm. Yes, it was, yeah. It wasn't the Azagal one, was it? Because uh, Gal... No, it was the Accurate Miniatures one. Yeah, there's... Um... Yeah, I still, I still think they've got kits. I'd say if you can get a the hell diver, I'd get it because that is a fantastic kit. Oh, and they did an Avenger, didn't they? That was it. Yeah. yeah. Well, I've the US Navy torpedoes. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Is there any pearlescent shader for modern jet canopies? Not that I'm aware of. Yeah. You can get aftermarket ones, which have got that pearlescent look to them. But even that, I don't think sometimes looks real. Um, it's it's too faint if that makes sense i've got one here somewhere uh, yeah, roger, roger's just put up i see a fix are bringing out oh my god uh, some fun stuff is it to do with our film no it's to cash in on the film that was coming out whenever it is and they're, and but, they're the old airfix kits as well they're yeah, not it's new. the really old stuff really yeah from the 80s so yeah, this is it. It's one from a uh, stealth, but you can see it, it looks quite good. But if you notice, it's on the bit you're going to paint. The clear part itself isn't that. Hang on, we'll get it out. Just why before it flicked off. Yeah, Jez, it will be absolutely fine that primer surfacer with your uh, high row boy and lacquer paints so will be perfect for that. So, but if you get my point, it's like if you catch it in the light like that, that's just because it's off of one of my lights. But generally, you wouldn't see it. That's my point. It's all very well this texture, but this is all going to be painted black, but you wouldn't see it. I don't think you'd actually notice it. You know? But that's my only point to these ones. As I say, they do do them all. So there you go, take your pick. As I say, these are all the 32nd, but they do do the A10, 48th, and the 48th for the Hornets. Uh, yeah, so, yeah. So that's those ones, AFV. It's a half glass two system, but, yeah. I must admit, I have used one, and you'd never know it's on it. So, I haven't got that kit anymore, but, yes, it's a bit uh, weird on that one, so... I'd, personally I think you're better off if you wanted to to just give it a tint like a smoke type tint and that will give the effect of again trying to get it re replicate it I know the one you're probably thinking about is something like on a Raptor the F22 has that gold tint so 
and F-16s have it on the first part of the canopies, but I don't know, it's very, very difficult to try and recreate it unless you've got one that's got that goldy sort of color done already. And some of them do do it. We've done it with mine with the F-16, things like that, where you get two canopies. So one of them's tinted, one of them isn't. So it might be a way, but as far as I know, I don't think there's a paint you could do it with, is there, Matt? Not that I know of. No, I can't think of one at the top of my head. No, I've only ever seen people paint canopies with smoke. Mm. Yeah, mm. And I've done it a few yeah. times. So, uh, Gordon says, Phil, can you give us a look at your B17 progress and what do you think of the kit so far? No. Yeah, I'll tell no. you what, you can have a two second webcam overshoot. Look. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> there it is. Um, so <laughs> far, I have to say, I haven't had any problems. Um, I've tried the wing fit and the wing fit on my kit is perfect so a lot of people have told me the wings don't fit but I haven't had that problem because I've dry fitted it as in I've bolted the wings together put them on and I haven't got an issue with that said problem so and that's obviously one of the major ones I know a lot of people were criticizing about the other thing as well is that you know and i'm not saying it is because i'm not quite there yet but a lot of people have said about once you get all the interior into it getting the halves together and stuff like that that's no different from a wing nuts wings kit and i've had it before where if you over paint the parts and then you put them in without cleaning off the edges to get them in there that microns of paint turns into gaps and i've had it happen to wing nut wings kits you know when i did the sop with triplane that was my fault because i painted the framework and the insides of it when it came together and i put them in i had a gap and it was like nobody else had a gap uh but i did and it's because i didn't glue the parts in i just put them in and it sandwiched and it held itself if i'd used glue it probably would have melted a bit and melted through the paint and made a proper join but yeah so i think that may be some of the issues in there but so far no problem at all as i say it's just about to go into paint tomorrow we'll get the paint uh the inside will be painted up tomorrow so that's the plan with that one mm. So we will see how it goes. But so far, I have to say, no problems. Uh, Alpha Mike Sierra says, guys, what is your technique for painting the engine exhausts on different shades on metal, like the ones you'd find on a MiG-29? Uh, normally I start with the base color. So I'll usually go in there, if it's gonna be doing that heaty bluey look and all the rest of it, normally something just like a, like a stainless steel. So it's got a blue hue to it already. Uh, and then you're just going to then be building up with other shades of metals. Um, so obviously you can go in there like a polished aluminium as well. It's quite a nice one for dancing around with it. And then going in with the heat colours. So clear reds, blues, yellows if you wanted to. Probably not so much yellows. But, uh, and you know, it's almost like a mottling technique. You sort of, uh, the feathers from the engine exhaust tend to have areas where they blue so you can go in there with like clear blues on those areas and then other areas that go around but what i call it is almost like the egg effect so i will do the overall and then obviously you're working to smaller areas so the outer bit may be blue on the outside as it's going into the silvers of the metal and then as you're getting to the the, the heat source in it goes in further you go through the purples you know and obviously the colors like that as it gets deeper into it and you're sort of just working into those spots but a lot of it's just mottling around with it and and sort of going through you guys how do you do it so right. that's the good thing about extreme metals isn't it because they do pretty much all those colors yeah in that range so you can just like yeah just as i say just airbrush just blend them in and so that's subtle subtle and yeah make it mm. do it not too much into your like obviously painting in colors like going in with blues and reds and yellows and things like that and purples what you can do is obviously get the tamiya weathering set which mm. i've got whichever one it is it's the number yeah it's the number d so it's like eye makeup so literally all you do is you have this and you can rub these on and you get that sort of you know the bluing effect as well and obviously you've got down in here uh, there's eyeshadow really because that you can get an eyeshadow kit but it's literally just going in and you just go along with it and you can put the blues in and the different colors and you've got the heat exhausts and the various things uh, and do it that way so that's another safer alternative if you didn't want to, if you don't trust your airbrushing and things like that, and going with those. There you go, safe way of doing it. It is. Yeah. yeah. 
Right, Tiger One, mid-production, Tamiya kit. It tells me to glue the tracks together, then leave to set, and then to bend in position. Is this the best way? Yeah, if you use extra thin, because they're link in length, I think, or the individuals, I can't remember. I think they're individuals, actually. Um, glue them together, let them set for, oh, my God, uh, you know, just till they get tacky kind of thing, and then you can bend them around the sprockets and um, idle a wheel. And that is definitely the best way to do it, isn't it? And yeah, you get a good a good few hours worth of yeah endability, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. working time with it. Yeah, hmm. yeah. Just don't thing it and then leave it overnight. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. If you can, you could go off and leave it for an hour. Put them together, leave it for an hour. But I do it in sections anyway. So I'll go round. You know the um, sprocket in the idler wheel and just do it to that section then i'll build another section yeah so yeah. you get the right sag or you know it's not so bad under the flat bit underneath but obviously gain it into to fitting into the the teeth and stuff and, and sitting right around here um yeah just do it in sections and then join it up be fun talk to philly loves doing individual track didn't you? yeah i love the tracks yeah <laughs> Phil and no. team, uh, airbrushing question. Have you tried the following two airbrushes? The Pache Talon uh, and the Badger 360 Universal? No, not that I'm aware of. I've got Badger airbrush, but I've got the Renegade Crow. Hmm. But I've never used the Pache, or however you pronounce it. I've never Pache. tried one. Pache. 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 I've got yeah. nothing either. Got a Badger 150. And that's harder and steam back, and that's it. I've got a Revel airbrush that's actually a Badger airbrush, but. Hmm. Actually, my Renegade Crew is alright. Proper chunky thing. It's, um, it's a nice airbrush, to be honest. I, I might have done, because I've used loads of airbrush, because everyone comes here, brings their airbrush normally, and yeah. normally they've got a problem with it or something as it happens, so. I end up having to go with them, but uh, as I say, I, I don't own any of those, put it that way. Um, but you know, the thing is, we often get this question and it's it's one of those things where airbrushes are like cars. If you've been brought up driving a Ford, you'll probably be a Ford driver forevermore, you know, because you're used to it, you know it's reliable, blah, 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 and that's what you do, okay? So, and you just stick with it. And it's one of those things, memory, you know action holding an airbrush and everything else so to switch out to a different manufacturer is usually something most people don't tend to do unless they're really struggling and that's often what i say as well when people struggle with airbrushing i often say have you tried another airbrush because it may be just you don't get on with that airbrush you know you have another go at another one and you do but at the end of the day they all just atomize paint they all do exactly the same thing so it is literally what works for you as long as you're happy with it and it's doing what you do there's no such thing. And it doesn't matter if you spend 50 quid on an airbrush or 500 quid on an airbrush. If it works for you, perfect. So, question. Have, have you ever uh, enjoyed making a kit so much that when you've finished, you've gone out and built another one? I'm not talking about commissions, just enjoyment. I have not, to be honest, because once I've built, <coughs> excuse me, built that subject, I want to try another subject. So, no, I, I've never done it. Any of you three? No. Straight away. No, not as I say. I've I've built models like when I was younger. Funny enough, when I did like my mini aircraft carrier Dio. So, you know, I built a couple of models and thought, oh, I'll get a couple more of those. I enjoyed doing those and it made a little squadron and things. But as an adult and doing it properly, I've never done it. I've built kits before for commissions and then I bought the kit for myself afterwards with that thought of I'll build that again one day because it was a great kit for me yeah. and then never have. So, <laughs> yeah. The only thing I suppose I've ever done like it, funny enough, because it is Intruder Day, when I built that Intruder, I bought another one with the thought of actually doing another one, but this time I want to do it as if it's ready on the catapult to go. So a little diorama about this big with it sat with the wings down with the bomb load on it with some retarded Mark 82s uh, and do those and I've always had that in my mind's eye I'd like to do that again so I think that's probably as close as I've come to doing it never done it but I've got the kit and an idea to do it at some point I've got a few duplicates in the stash 
because I think I, I wouldn't mind building two or, you know, at some stage. Um, and I've got like multiples of the same type of aircraft, like F-18s or F-4s and things. Um, but I've never really sort of like purposely gone out and bought a kit because I thought, oh, yeah, it's fantastic. Mm. I do sometimes see other people's builds and think, oh, that looks fantastic. So I'll go and buy the kit. Yeah, but you've done actually if you built a kit. Yeah, I know, yeah. And mm. then you do another one straight after of the same kit. Did he say buy or build? Build. Yeah. Not buy, build. No. I well, usually have a gap, like I've built lots of these. But I wouldn't go finish this and then jump straight onto another one. Although I've got another one and another one. I promise I've always got it in my mind what I'm going to build so like two or three kits in advance so sort of like it's trying to get a kit built so then I can start on the next one yeah so I never, never really have even like my schedule is not like Phil's schedules yeah where he's asked to do it you know for the for the show mine's sort of like you know but I still know what I want to build because it's mainly group builds or SIGs or things like that yeah I'm doing it That's for it. So. Mm. Our, our build schedule is planned out for us isn't it yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 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 Because <laughs> we choose it we choose it at the end of the year before don't yeah. we what we're <laughs> or we're building for the Luftwaffe SIG or one of the SIGs so it yeah. is kind yeah. of mapped out what we you know what we're going to build so yeah it's um, quite nice really because you don't have to think about it in a funny way. You have to think, think about the subject, but the the yeah. job is already done for you in a way, isn't it? If you know what I mean. Yeah. I mean, now I finish these two. It's going to be finishing off the kefir. Yeah. Once the kefir is done, it's then two six two for the bulk oh. to be a mm. sig, and then which will then go for the Luftwaffe sig when we'll. And then it'll be again. Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> and then it'll be Christmas. <laughs> it'll be Christmas. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Twenty twenty five. Right. Question, does anybody do a T TSR2 now? The only one I know of, that I, if you can get it, is the Great Wall Obbies one in 1144. Mm. Well, that's hard to get hold of as well, so probably not. I'm afraid that, it was Airfix or Airfix, wasn't it? Yeah, well, Airfix yeah, re-released the second one, didn't they? But it wasn't a TSR2, it was the Japanese-y bandai -y yeah. Yeah. But you could build it, though, couldn't but, you? But, yeah, to? it had all the parts, and it even had the decals in the kit to do it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You could probably still pick it up second hand. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and whatever happened to your Star Wars, Trench Run, Diorama, Casting my bobby you were doing yeah i've still got it all yeah but yeah never got round to finish getting it done as his yeah. life gets in the way yeah well then good ideas what it mate yes uh, <laughs> <laughs> best mm. chinook any scale any version it's an area yeah that's the only one because the revel is the the, the italian area kit so well there is the trumpy one isn't there well, I've never seen a Trumpy 72nd one. I haven't seen the Trumpy 72nd one. I've only seen the, the big one, the 35th. But 48 oh. scale, yeah, that's where you want to go. I'll probably sit with Valeria. Uh, uh, Jason's just asked, are we able to get any other 148 Tamir F-16s in? I don't know what we can get now, to be honest, because the one that we used to stop where you could do everything is gone. Yeah. So I'd have to ask, I'd have to ask what they do, because... I'm not 100% sure anymore. Uh, Question, what was the first model kit you ever made? God knows. <laughs> I've got mine. I can't think Actually, I do know that one. I oh. do know mine because I have the kit. That's the first kit I ever made that I can remember. I've got no idea. I can't remember what I did yesterday, so God knows what I did no. four years ago. Funny enough, I phoned my dad up the other day and he said that he'd found some of my old model kits. Oh, you got to get them when the time's right. Ah, uh, yeah, but then he, was in, then he also mentioned that he found them whilst digging in the garden. Oh, he found oh. where he set fire to them in the garden, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was those two were the mine. Very... There you go, 1974, both of them. Nope, sorry, that's 1974. This one is 1976. So clearly I didn't build it when I was one, but... No. <laughs> to be honest, mine would probably be a Matchbox kit of some point, but I wouldn't know which one it was. So, yeah. Mine's an Airfix kit. No, it was Matchbox, because I used to like the Matchbox kits, and it was easy to get hold of. So, 
it probably would have been something like a matchbox Spitfire or something, I think. See, my local uh, corner shop used to have a range of kits in there, and to this day, I can't remember what they were. But I, all I remember knew that the, the styrene was silver in every kit. Any oh. ideas? Who's that? Say again. Always silver. Yeah, my local corner shop used to do kits, and they were just one seventy second. And to this day, ah. I can't remember what they were. But they were literally just silver styrene. All the aircraft they did. But but they were 72nd. There wasn't many in the range. I think they only had about 10. Because I built them all over the years. Um, but it was when I was little. and But I just cannot remember. And I've asked my mum and she ain't got a clue. And as I say, my dad would have probably remembered. But he's no longer here. So I can't ask him. So it's like, but yeah, that was the thing. It, it rings a bell. But Mark. it was silver. The styrene was silver with yeah. every kit. Yeah. But I can't I remember who it was. Hella. Was it Hella? Jesus, you're trying to tell me after all these years I did build Hella as a kid. <laughs> I, I'm sure Hella used to have silver plastic. Uh, it's a real shut up. It could, it could have been, you know. I'm not 100%. Yeah. It could have been Hella. But that's the only thing I remember from it. I couldn't tell you what they were or things like that, but uh, you only had about 10 in the shop and over the time I built them all. So... Oh, so, that's yes. I think, but yeah, it could have been, you know. Revel did silver kits, but hmm. you, uh, I don't know. It could have been Revel. Um, quick one here. Question: uh, Is linen for World War One aircraft as yellow and as bright as Humbrol seventy four linen? Some paint artwork shows it in such uh, shows it as such. I know Phil, uh, but I can only get Humbrol or Tamiya. Well, to be honest, if it's the only ones you can get, you might as well go with it. Don't forget, if you fake it's a little bit strong, just lighten it up a little bit. Mm. You know, because it doesn't matter if you're using Humbrol paints, you can still lighten them as we do with everything else. So don't worry about it, don't sweat it. Nathan's got a large collection of old paints he's now swimming through. The rust and junk. Just um, going back to your kit that was silver plastic. Because people are shouting up, but I think you'd know if it was like an airfit kit, wouldn't you? You'd remember, wouldn't you? Mm. It just, I'll tell you what makes me throw back to it being hella. You know how you just built that Trojan? Yeah. It was the silver plastic, wasn't it? Yes, it was, yes. Yeah. And I think yeah. some of their other kits were in silver plastic, if I remember. I don't know. Because Hella by then wouldn't have been sort of something that would have... Would have they wouldn't have been quite newish, I think, with yeah. the UK. Because you wouldn't have had Azagawa or any of the other brands from then. So, I don't know. Interesting. It wouldn't be Novo, would it? Well, the old Frog Novo ones. Might have mm. been. Might have been, actually. I don't think it was Hella. Uh, I think I would have remembered Hella, but there you go. Yeah, there's the Frog Novo ones, but... Yeah. I don't know. Ooh, that's Can got... I just re quickly Frog... reply to Adrian? Yeah. He says, is this a photographic background? It's fair. I got the idea from a film years ago. It's, it's just a... Um, <laughs> it's just a window blind. But it's great because it, it goes out the way. That's why I like doing it that way. Yeah. It doesn't get covered in crap and all the junk. See, yeah. Martin's backed me up. He remembers that Ella Kit's being silver. Hmm. Mm. Mm, I don't know. Back to this linen colour. Yeah. Umbral 74 does look really yellow. I'd oh, be tempted to do a Humbrol 103 or yeah. Umbral 3. Here we have, well. No, that's 71. What's 71, Nathan? 71? Yeah, I've got okay. Umbrol 71. Oh, I've got 74 as well. Here we go. 74 looks way too yellow on this colour chart. There you go. Yeah. That, that's Umbrol 74 on the tin, look. I'd be tempted to use maybe the pale stone or a cream colour from the Humbrol red. Yeah. yeah I mean, linen's do. like... All sorts of different colours, isn't it? Hey, look what I've had. Oh, here we go. God, he's going through his paint <laughs> collection. Paint. Oh. Right, Compu colour. Clear dope linen. Oh, there you go. 
paint. I was going to say, that's not currently available in the shops. Yeah, but... I'm it's probably checking. got lead in it, that stuff. Yeah. Oh, it's fine. <laughs> I tell you what, it's very yellow. Hold on, let me just put my overhead on. Pay to Humbro 72, hold on. Yeah, I've got a bit running down the side of the tin, as you do. I'm surprised the actual lid. Am I on? Yeah, hold on. Oh, on right, big okay. Hold that's, on. that's 74, and this is... Oh, hold on, where is he? There he is. Yeah. Yeah, so you can see like the top, I bet it's knocking on a bit. But then you look at the side. It's yeah, bright so yellow, isn't it? There's not a lot in it, is there, compared to the... If you went off that top, you'd be a bit disappointed if that was what you got inside. I also always wanted to push that away to a much paler colour. I think it should be, they do look a bit yellow. Yeah. More know. of a stone colour. I'm thinking more... If you whack a load of white in it, you'd get about the right colour, wouldn't you? Yeah. 70 what, 71, did you say? Because that's 71. Yeah, that's a better colour to me, my a bit... I think I'd go <laughs> if you mix with white and see what you end up with. Like you said, I won't be before, far off of stone. Yeah, again, again, don't be frightened to mix colours. Mm. You know, yeah. you, if you, in your heart, I always say that, especially from a modeler's point of view, the great thing is, is that if it doesn't look right to you, you can then just mix it and change it to make it to what feels right for you. And that's what we're getting back to that thing about modeling as a hobby. It's your hobby. You paint it what you want to do. So if you think that's too yellow, then, you know, you might want to cut it with something else or go down a different route. Oh my God, look three. at him going back through history. A fix number nine. M number nine. <laughs> It's like a paint museum. It is. They're going to have run out there. Unless you want Airfix number four. <laughs> I'd love to actually paint a kit in these just to, just to see if they still work. It's, I, I think, think you I'd... should. Don't yeah. stick it through your nice new airbrush I've just done for you, though. <laughs> use both of your other crappy things. I will. I'll use on the crap ones. <laughs> hey, where's my chart? I do, actually, I've got an Airfix chart here. Oh, what, from 19 what? Yeah, look. <laughs> in black, is it so old it's in black and white? Yeah, it's no, sepia. no, no. No, look. <laughs> Hold on. I nicked it out of a magazine. It was on old Airfix catalogue or something. So they, <laughs> that that was their range of colours. What happened to that? Now everything's <laughs> just massive now, isn't it? <laughs> we could mix colours back in the 70s. We can't do it anymore. No. So M9 was light beige and M4, what I've got, is manila. There you go, don't get names like that no more, do you? No. Well, they did all the, you know, all the... They do magnolia the... colour. Do you know, <laughs> imagine how easy it yeah, was. Yeah, that was manila. For the show. <laughs> <laughs> you know. God, yeah, that would be fantastic, wouldn't it? Mm. Bellum. Yeah, some cool names. <laughs> Gl glossy enamels, I bet they're still drying there. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> I think I've got some of them somewhere, the gloss ones as well. <laughs> I bet they are full of Post red. office red. I'm sure I've got a post office red or a Brunswick green. <laughs> yeah. Right, a couple of things down here. The guys frog. are pointing out that they're thinking that silver kits could be frog, hella. Uh, what was the other ones you guys were saying? Uh, a couple of quite interesting ones. Of thing was it? Uh, where are we? I'm sure there's some others in there. Uh, Nova. Novo. Novo. Which were from? There you go. Uh, yeah, so like Monkey was saying, he's like 75p for his first 70 second kits, matchbox kits. I think that's what mine were. Because it's still got the price tag on one. <laughs> so, yes. Very nice. Very cool. Uh, da -da. Hey, look, I found two gloss. Airfix paint. Right. Your mission next week, should you choose to accept it, is to spray that live. Because we we'll need a laugh. It's still it, tacky. What? Well, this is vintage paint. I'm not opening it. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean, open it? You can't open it. You never get the <laughs> lid off. <It's laughs> still... To be honest, we can watch the first hour of the show with him trying to mix it. <laughs> yeah, that big lump. I'll be weary. Yeah, you have to do it old school with a cocktail stick. That's all you're allowed. <laughs> uh, or a paintbrush. 
the other side <laughs> of the paint <laughs> mm. Neil, Neil says, question for the team. Ever thought of doing a paint colour mastermind? A paint making number is given and the contestant has to name the colour. No. Oh, man, I'm <laughs> terrible at that. I, I, that's why I have them on a wall so I can look at them. So that's yeah. when I catch you. People say about, what, you, would you use XF? And I'm like, uh, yes, I would, because that looks quite <laughs> close. I'm looking at it because I can't remember what it is. I used to be really handy with FS numbers, federal standard numbers. I used to know pretty much all the major ones off by heart. So yeah. when people would say about, oh, what colours would you paint, uh, you know, like an F-16, I used to be able to rattle them all off in succession and just, you know, literally go, oh, well, you want 36375, 36320, and 36118. There you go, still got it. Um, but I used to do it for pretty much every aircraft back in the day, but I don't know I can remember it now. Yeah. So, yes. <laughs> Yes, they're saying lots of people had uh, silver kits out in the day. Uh, Revel, Aurora, Monogram. Yes. Yeah. Never mind. To be honest, I can't remember them. So <laughs> I probably would have made a fuzz of them. The canopies would have been just a solid blob of glue. <clears throat> David wants the um, matchbox model name and kit number of your first kit you build. Because he wants to take a picture of it. What, this one? Yeah, put your overhead on. So yes, on the overhead. Look at the box art, that's all cool. Uh, oh, yeah, he fixed paints in glass jars. Do you remember them? No, I'm not that old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, where's John? <laughs> so, yes. So I'll let you off there, Andy. Okay, 23. 23. There you go. Yeah. Well, you don't even need to paint it, though. And I'm very lucky because one of the guys, and apologies, I can't remember who you were, sent me, because my kit is bad, so they, he sent me the missing parts out of it. Apologies, I've forgotten who it was now. I should have wrote a note and put it inside it who did it. But because when I went to build it, I was like, I can't, I've only got half a kit. And the, he sent me the, the bits I was missing. So big thank you for that one. A treasured kit. Definitely. Which version were you going to do? I wanted to do the usual one. You know, the uh, Mark II, is it? The one with a scoopy mouth. Yes. The proper one. Proper one. Uh, oh, sorry. It's the Mark VI. Uh, as opposed to being the... Uh, Tempest Mark II. Uh, Ed put up about the Gre Grex line of airbrushes. What do you think of them? Yeah, I used to use Grexes over thingies. I used to demo them for a certain company. Yeah, I've never used one, so... Mm. Hot comment, I'm afraid. Very comfy in the hand, I have to say. They are incredibly comfy to hold. They've got, like, plasticky moulding bits as well. And it, it actually, they are very, very nice to hold. The trigger ones, and um, that's why I used to demo most of the time, they are really good. They are good bits of kit. But you can get conversions to make a normal airbrush into it and all these things. So they do some quite clever stuff. Tri tri tritium trigger line, is it something? Yeah, it? yeah. They do all the, the trigger type ones. Want to come up and say hello? Uh -huh. Oh, being very polite oh, tonight. Hello. hello. <laughs> so yeah, so cool. Yes. Well, we're done here tonight, then, boys. It's yes, I think now. we're done. So dog's <laughs> telling me he wants to go out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Thank you very much for joining us this evening, everybody. An absolute pleasure as always. Don't forget, you can go off and see the great review. Um, you can't buy it because we're out of stock. I noticed when I checked this afternoon. Ah, but we won't be tomorrow. All oh, right, we've got some more coming in. And Good. the hurricanes should be back tomorrow. Cool. Hurricane as well. So, yeah good kit so got the review of that and like I say the hurricane is a beautiful kit everyone should go out and buy that one anyway but that's really really nice as well the next part of the actual this one up which I think is part five I think yeah something like that uh it will be up with you tomorrow afternoon as well and then obviously the final part of that will be up with you because I'm going to go off and photograph it in a minute we'll try and uh yeah we'll give that a well see how that one goes as I say we'll be back with you tomorrow afternoon you guys on for a live show tomorrow afternoon hi what we're good what we're doing three, three, two, three two. Two. Four. Yeah. Yeah. Three, three two, yeah. four ish. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm, a, I'm at work. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Tomorrow's show will be live, and uh, Andy can join us on his phone from his. Are you out and about yeah. now, or are you used to back in the warehouse? Uh, ninety percent. I'm out and about. And oh, there you go. You could just like you know. Pull Skype up in the in. Lay -by. 
<laughs> you could have mobile. <laughs> you could take yeah. us on your round. It'd be great. Yeah. Mo- mobile reporter. <laughs> Very good. So yeah, so we'll be live tomorrow. Say three o'clock. We'll be on live back with you uh, tomorrow for the roundup show. And yeah. um, I'll grab all your photos and make a, a montage of all the builds that have been finished over the last two weeks as well. Uh, and we'll yeah. go from there. So thank you very much for joining us uh, this evening. Absolute pleasure as always. Happy modelling. Take care. Stay safe. We'll see you again very, very soon. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.